Hey everyone, I'm Connor and I'm going to be taking you through this week's patient update video. So let's dive in. First up, we have Swainson's Hawk 71B. This hawk was admitted with a spiral fracture in its right ulna, but because the fracture had great alignment and compression, this bird has already produced a stable callus within the fracture site and is ready to begin flight conditioning uh, a little earlier than usual. Up next is red-tailed hawk 726. This bird was seen grounded and unable to fly. After admitting the hawk, we noticed that it had a severe beak malalignment due to a lower mandible or jaw fracture. In addition, the bird also had a large infestation of feather mites that had been damaging the feathers on the hawk. We currently are doing physical therapy to improve the beak alignment as well as uh, some shaping of the beak for functionality back in the wild. Next is Swainson's Hawk 730. This hawk is one of our more recent admits and was picked up alongside the road in Rigby, Idaho. The bird is emaciated and had a very recent fractured ulna in its left wing. The fracture has reasonable alignment, so we're opting to attempt to heal this bone non-surgically utilizing a wrap and the radius of the wing as a natural splint. Here we have red-tailed hawk 723. This bird came in with a fractured right tarsometatarsus, uh, which is the furthest bone in its leg, and has spent the last week in a reinforced leg splint to keep the fracture aligned. So far, the splint has been successful and the bird is maintaining both sensation and motor control in the foot below the fracture. Up next is Swainson's Hawk 727. This hawk was found alongside the highway in Afton, Wyoming and was found to have head and eye trauma as well as a fractured coracoid, a reinforcing bone near its clavicle. After a week of topical eye drops, we have already cleared the blood that was present in both eyes due to the collision and are now waiting for the coracoid to callus and stabilize before getting the hawk into flight conditioning. Finally, we have the upcoming release of Great Horned Owl 610B. We are releasing this owl tomorrow after it was found in June, displaced from its family. Upon admission, we noticed it was emaciated and displaying signs of paresis of its lower extremities. After weeks of physical therapy on its legs and a refeeding schedule to return it to normal weight, it is now doing over 2,000 feet of flight in our flight chamber and is ready to return back to the wild. That's all we've got time for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember, if you want to do your part in keeping wild birds wild, you can check out our website at tetonraptorcenter.org and make a donation. You can also click the link in the description below to donate directly. Thanks for checking in.